What's up guys, the February Patreon rewards are now available. Terminate, Elspeth's Sun's Champion, and the Ur Dragon are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves, or by clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Let's Open series. I really need to start calling it that. Uh, that is technically what I changed it to. But anyway, today let's open a pack of Guilds of Ravnica. This is obviously one of the newer sets in Magic's history, just coming out, oops, sorry about that, it's coming out last year. Uh, the first in the new cycle of the Ravnica set, uh, which I thought was very successful. Uh, Ravnica in, historically is one of people's like favorite original sets. Uh, Ravnica City of Guilds came out quite a long time ago. We obviously had Return to Ravnica after that. Uh, and then we start off with Guilds of Ravnica in this last cycle. Uh, and honestly, all of them have been fine for me. Uh, I definitely think Return to Ravnica era was the worst. Uh, but Guilds of Ravnica, a pretty strong comeback, uh, not quite to the level of, you know, obviously the OG Ravnica, but who can expect that? So, uh, I really like this set. There's a lot of really cool stuff in this set. A uh, lot of multicolor is going to be the theme. Uh, so as we go through and kind of determine what our draft pick will be, that's something we need to keep in mind. Uh, we we know that we're going to be in multicolor uh, decks most of the time. Uh, a lot of times you can even splash a third color, so it's not really that surprising to find ourselves picking a gold card first, where in a normal set maybe we would try to avoid that, uh, just so we're not you know forcing ourselves into a couple color options that might be a little bit difficult to play. So uh, this, we are going to see that right off the bat. I'm going to focus down just a bit. Uh, there we go. So, <clears throat> all right, let's get started. Our first card here, Healer's Hawk is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white. It has flying and lifelink. Uh, as 1-1s one, go, this is a super strong card. So I actually really like this one. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a first pickable card, uh, depending on the rest of the pack, obviously. But a 1-1 one, one flyer on for 1 off the bat is great. A 1-1 one, one flyer with lifelink is even better because you're going to just gain incremental life, especially in the early turns of the game. Uh, it also holds equipment very well, holds enchantments very well, because obviously it's evasive. Uh, so there's a lot to keep in mind with a card like this. I don't necessarily think it's an amazing one, but I do think it's very good. We do see this hit standard decks right now, like white weenie decks, life gain decks, things like that. Uh, so truly a lot of upside for a card like this. I'm going to keep it here for now with the expectation that we'll probably replace it uh, very soon. Uh, Dazzling Light is an instant for one blue. Target creature gets minus three, minus zero until the end of the turn, and then you Surveil two. So Surveil was a new mechanic introduced in this set, uh, specific to the Demir guild is kind of the idea. Uh, Demir is blue and black, for those who don't know. Uh, essentially, you look at the top, in this case, two cards of your deck. Uh, you can get Surveil 1, Surveil 3, whatever you want. Uh, put that, put any number of uh, them into your graveyard and put the rest on top of your library in any order. So it's very similar to... <sighs> I, I hesitate to say scrying because you don't put anything on the bottom of your deck, uh, but you get to filter your draws as if you're scrying. Uh, and so a lot of times what you find yourself doing is, you know, you surveil maybe later in the game, you get away from some of these lands that you may not need. Or in the early turns of the game, maybe you need a land. Maybe you surveil and keep the lands on top. So there's a lot of different ways <clears throat> you can do that depending on the state of the game. Uh, very, very strong mechanic. However, not a very strong card, Dazzling Lights. Uh, it's not great. Uh, any of these kind of combat tricks where it's like, I'm going to negatively impact the opponent's cards more than I'm going to uh, positively impact mine, I tend to avoid. I don't like them very much. It's a very blue way of doing a combat trick for sure. Uh, but the only reason you would truly play this is for the surve surveil mechanic. I don't think this is a great card to pick. Uh, Fire Urchin is a 1-3 for 1 and a red. It does have Trample. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus 1, plus 0 until the end of the turn. Uh, so actually, there this falls generally, it's not necessarily meant for, uh, though it definitely falls into the Is It guild a little bit more, where it's very spells focused. Uh, a lot of removal spells, lots of instant speed stuff, a lot of card draw, a lot of cool stuff in that, that guild. Uh, and this definitely falls in that category where it's buffing off of all those instants and sorceries. It's very reminiscent of the old weird cards that we saw, uh, weird creature type cards that we saw in uh, Return to Ravnica. Um, 
And it's a powerful card. It's not an amazing one, but I actually really like it. And I would debate on taking it over Healer's Hawk. I don't think either one is great uh, first pick, but this is a perfectly fine card. The only reason I don't like this, though, is that in draft, you tend to focus a little bit more on creatures. And so if you take this early, it's good because you know that you need to take those instants and sorceries. However, uh, you fall into the trap of, okay, I'm not going to be on board very strong most of the time. Uh, and so I think because of that, I'd rather take Healer's Hawk. Neither one's amazing. We'll see what we get, though, hopefully throughout the rest of the pack. Uh, Urban Utopia is one in a green for an enchant land. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you do draw a card, and then the enchanted land has tap and add one mana of any color. So this is a higher priority in this set than it is in a lot of other sets, again, because we're in a multicolor set. Uh, this is not something that I would first pick, but what I would do is if I find myself playing three, four, maybe even five colors, uh, just five color good stuff, you need, absolutely need cards like this uh, that not only give you every color of mana that you could possibly want, uh, but you also get to draw a card off of it. So it replaces itself immediately. There's a lot of upside to this. Not going to take it over anything that we've got so far because I don't know what deck we're going to be in, but this definitely allows you to, to splash colors, do whatever you need to do very, very easily. Uh, Moonmark Painter is a 2-3 for 2 and 2 black. It has Undergrowth, which is the Golgari mechanic, which is the green-black guild. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target creature gains Menace and gets plus X plus 0 until the end of the turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Uh, if you don't know what Menace does, it can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. And Undergrowth is the... it counts the number of creature cards in your graveyard, specifically yours, not your opponent's. Uh, Moonmark Painter... Not an exciting card, honestly. I think it's fine, uh, but it's not necessarily all that great. Uh, you have to have another creature on the field for this to be truly good. It can, I mean, it can target itself, uh, but it's not doing anything. It doesn't have haste. It's not going to be able to swing in uh, unless you have a way to give it haste. So I don't love this card personally. I'd honestly rather have the Healer's Hawk, uh, which is a little bit silly, but I do think it's just a more solid early game card. Uh, Capture Sphere is three and a blue. Uh, for an enchant creature, it does have flash, so you can play it at instant speed. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. The enchanted creature does not untap during its controller's untap step. So this is your very classic tapper, claustrophobia style card for blue. It's removal for blue. The fact that it has flash is great. It does mean the card is a little bit more expensive than we would normally see, for instance. Uh, Claustrophobia is two blue and a one, obviously not in this set, but it does relatively close to the same thing. Uh, this obviously costs one more, uh, not necessarily two blue, which is nice, but definitely a little bit more expensive. That All that being said, this is by far and away, I think, the pick so far. Uh, removal's always at a premium. This is a decent removal spell. It's not amazing. It's not just story target creature, but uh, for blue, it's about as close as you can get. Uh, and so I definitely think it is the pick here. Uh, Erstwhile Trooper is a 2-2 uh, for one, a black and a green. Discard a creature card, uh, gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until the end of the turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. Uh, I found this card to be a little bit underwhelming. Uh, the, the reason I don't love it uh, is it does help trigger undergrowth and everything like that, which is nice, but you're discarding creature cards, and creature cards are how you win in limited. Uh, and so, yeah, you can invest a lot in this and hopefully get a lot of damage in, especially with trample, which is fine. Uh, but if they just have a removal spell, then like you're opening yourself up to getting two for one, three for one, a lot of different stuff. So... I don't love it. I do think that there are decks that would love a card like this, but I tended, uh, during my time drafting Guilds of Ravnica, I really was unimpressed with this card. Definitely not a pick that I would take. Uh, Maniacal Rage is one in a red for an enchant creature, and very simply, it gets plus two, plus two, and cannot block. Um, two things important to note here. Uh, first thing, the plus two, plus two for two mana, I'm in. That's great. Uh, the fact that the creature cannot block means that you can actually use this on your opponent's creatures and actually win off of a card like this. I know that sounds very strange, but what I mean by that uh, is if the creature can't block and you're the aggressive deck, all that means is you have one less creature on the field that you have to worry about when you swing in with your full team. Uh, so that's a very corner case uh, instance, so I'm not saying you should ever expect that, but uh, it is really worth noting because there are going to be instances where you tag your opponent's creature, not your own, 
and then all of a sudden you have a free attack, which is awesome. Uh, all that to be said, I don't love this card overall. Uh, enchant creatures, generally not my favorite kind of cards, just because they open you up for that two for one. I've talked about it enough. Uh, but they're fine. Uh, I, I just don't think this one is particularly very good. Uh, Hired Poisoner is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black with Death Touch. Very simple card and a very solid card. Anything with Death Touch and Limited, kind of at a premium. Uh, even if it is just a 1-1, one, one, it's going to trade off with something. Uh, at the very least, it's going to require some kind of removal or burn spell or something, uh, which, I'll just be honest, burning out by dealing like 3 damage to a card like Hired Poisoner feels terrible or uh, murdering a hired po poisoner <laughs> feels very terrible as well. You really want to save that for something bigger. Uh, these tend to stall the game pretty well. They tend never to attack uh, unless you're in a very commanding position, but they're great cards to just leave back on defense. I think I'd still rather have Capture Sphere, but definitely a solid card. A couple good one drops in this uh, pack. Blade Entrust Entr Instructor. I can talk. Instructor. Uh, is a 3-1 for 2 and a white, and it features Mentor, which was a really nice limited ability for the Boros uh, guild, uh, red-white for those who don't know. Uh, whenever this creature attacks, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Uh, the important thing here is the lesser power. Uh, the reason that this card works so well in that deck is because it is a 3-1, not a 2-2, two -two, for instance. Uh, I generally really, really hate when something has like one toughness or staggered power toughness to this extent. But in a deck like this, uh, in the mentor style deck where you get a lot of one ones and two twos and things like that, this triggers a lot of that mentor mechanic to hit all of those creatures. So it's really, really nice for that. That being said, it's not a high priority pick. It's nice for triggering mentor, but it, it does have its limits and it dies so easily that it's a little bit difficult to pick over something like capture sphere. Uh, our first uncommon is Golgari Raiders. It's a 0-0 zero, zero for 3 and a green. It does have haste, uh, and it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each creature in your graveyard with that undergrowth mechanic. Uh, I think this is a pretty solid card. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's amazing, but at turn 4, you probably at least have 2 or 3, uh, maybe 2 creatures in the graveyard. Later in the game, though, this just continues to scale up, which I think is really important. Uh, the ceiling is however many creatures are in your deck, technically. So uh, this could do a lot of damage and end the game very quickly. I hesitate to say it's better than Capture Sphere, but I kind of think it is. I'm going to keep them together and we'll see what we get. Uh, Whispering Snitch, hilarious art, uh, is a 1-3 for 1 and a black. Uh, whenever you surveil for the first time each turn, Whispering Snitch deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Uh, obviously for the Demir deck where you're very focused on uh, the surveil mechanic, you can trigger it very often. You really need to have a lot of triggers for surveil to make this card great. But if you can, it's very good. Uh, it does block on the ground at two fairly well. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's going to block a lot of the two twos and the early game stuff. Uh, and then it can just sit there and drain your opponent. So... This is a really powerful card, but in only in tandem with a lot of other things that I would rather probably have first. I know that's a little bit weird, but I think I would not take this over the cards that we've already got. Well, uh, Inex Inescapable Blaze is four and two red for an instant. Uh, it can't be countered, and it deals six damage to any target. That could be a Planeswalker, that could be a player, that could be a creature, it does not matter. So far, that's definitely the pick. Uh, so the, the great thing about this, it can end a game, obviously. If your opponent's at six life, this cannot be countered, and it's at instant speed, I win. Uh, it also deals with a heck of a lot of the creatures that get played in this format. Uh, yes, it's expensive, but at instant speed, who cares? Uh, it's fine. You can leave up your mana as you need to. Um, six damage is just a lot of damage. It's better than a Lava Axe by a long way. This is great. So definitely a strong pick. We'll see what our rare is. It is Pelt Collector, so one green for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, whenever a creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, uh, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, uh, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Pelt Collector. As long as it has three or more, uh, it has Trample. Um, this is like... So the cool thing about this is it's, it's just a really solid 1-1. One, one. You should play it if you get it. I don't think it's better than Inescapable Blaze. Uh, the reason being is yes, it's going to get those counters on it. Yes, it's going to be a lightning rod for removal, of course. Uh, and long term, it's probably going to be something that could take over a game. 
the problem is your opponent has all the time in the world to deal with a card like this. Uh, so yeah, it could get very, very strong. The sky's the limit with this uh, in terms of the ceiling, but like it can just die and that kind of sucks. Um, so, and it can die very early, even if you play this on turn one. So I don't super love this. I think late in the game, it's a very bad draw because obviously it takes a lot of time to get going. Uh, early in the game, it's a good draw, but it definitely is just going to get removed as quickly as possible. So I don't love it here as the pick. Uh, we do have the Boros Guild Gate. So there's a Guild Gate, if I'm not mistaken, in every pack. They are worth taking depending on your color combo. Not necessarily first pick, but definitely worth taking depending on what deck you find yourself in. Uh, and this one just, they all enter the battlefield tapped. This one happens to add the Boros colors of red and white. Perfectly fine. Not going to be the pick, obviously, until we know what the deck is. I definitely think the pick is Inescapable Blaze. Uh, I think that card is sweet. Definitely going to be the pick. If you disagree or if you have more insight into the Guilds of Ravnica set that you'd like to share, please do in the comment section below. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Uh, and as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Uh, that's going to be it. I was going to say something about the new set. Uh, it's just a black curtain. Hope you guys like it. But uh, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Let's Open video.